And we are back. I am Luke Thomas. That is Danny Segura, Brian Campbell, and then Iceman Chuck Mendenhall in the hat. This is After the Beat, where we answer all your questions using the hashtag the MMA beat. Again, thank you to everybody who submitted those. We always appreciate it. What fell back there during the show? Do we know? It's my phone. I do it every week. I'm sorry. Why does it keep falling out? Uh, yeah. Do you have like NBA breakaway <laughs> pants where the pockets are like facing down to the ground? Those are always so cool. Yep. Just put it in your in your thank you. jacket thank you pocket. Thank you. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say it, but you keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, remove the fourth wall all you want, all right? <laughs> yeah, I, we're so far past that, buddy. I mean, whatever. This is it's a low, the fifth wall. It's a low-budget show, bro. I mean, you know, let's... Let's be real about it. All right, time to get to your tweets here if we can, and uh, let's get to the first one. All right, Danny. The UFC has ramped up the number of events they have annually, and the media has seen it as being something negative. But isn't having more events helpful in giving y'all always something to talk about? Fight breakdowns, topics for your shows, content for the websites. Are we bitching about the hand that feeds us, Danny? I, I think there's something to say about that a little bit, yeah. I mean, at, at the end of the day, you know, the, the more fights there are, the more there is to talk about. But for example, we got UFC Wichita uh, this weekend, right? Um, <laughs> I don't you, know how much... Did you find Wichita on a map? Uh, probably not. I'm, I'm not sure that I could either. <laughs> I don't know how much time we spent talking about that. Why? Because, I mean, to be honest, besides the main event, there isn't a whole lot to talk about. Um, so I, I understand that point. I think there's some truth to that. But I do think that, uh, you know, by putting so many cards, it's also so hard to go in debt into things because you just got to move on to the next and the next and the next card. So uh, it's a double uh, double edged sword there. there. There's one edge and it hurts. Too, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Deep thanks, hard. thanks Deep Confucius. <laughs> We're out. I personally like a little more space between fights because there's so many good characters in this fight game. There's so many good stories to tell. I'm a guy who likes to know yeah. the stories and tell those stories. Um, I feel like at the acceleration from which we go from one to the next to the next, you so much of um, that should deserves attention goes unsaid. I feel like that's the only thing that bothers me. It's not so much um, that there are a lot of events, but th there are certain events when you're like, well, I have to pay attention to this when there's really not much on it and you know nothing's going to come of it. But you're not able to really focus on it anyway because it just is coming off a major pay per view or there's one the following week. You know what I mean? Yep. So it's like, it's it's in that sense like it just it takes your focus and splinters it too many different directions. Yeah. I'd like to see some of these guys like it. Ta it takes a lot now to distinguish yourself as a fighter. Yeah. Um, there's very few like Adesanya's who are getting all the love. There's guys out there um, like Johnny Walker, for instance. I'd love to know more about him, but he's you know he's fighting obviously he's fighting on every one of these fight cards yeah. we're talking about. That, but, that's uh, why he's there. <laughs> but. It's guys like that. You want to see them coming a little bit too. Not not in retrospect where you're like, well, he's already arrived. What, who is this guy? You know, you want to be able to give it equal yeah. coming in and going out. You don't like Weekend at Bellator where you get a different card in the same city every night? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's just always a different one, huh? Um, I would say, I mean, it's, the, the, the truth is that the sport and, and, and media generally has changed so much that it's not as much of a problem now where you can put the really good stuff on ESPN or pay-per-view and you can put the rest on the streaming platform and they're going to get 1.5 billion for it and you're like, eh, it's, this is a decent arrangement. But for folks who didn't, part of it is a, bit, is a somewhat antiquated argument where we used to have to do this. To your point, guys were just getting left behind. It was like really hard to stand out. And then two, you were, like, at first the audience wasn't ready for all this. Like, here's a, just a fact. When the UFC started adding more content, they pushed out all that old audience. Like all the people I used to watch pay-per-views with mm -hmm. 10 or 12 years ago, they don't. They're not around anymore. And like, granted, Connor brought some people back, and Ronda brought some people back, and John brings people, whoever. But they definitely pushed out a huge portion of their own audience. And there was a time there where you're like, we don't know which way the sport's going. Yeah. I think we're still living with some of those ghosts a little bit, but it's not as much of a deal now. I mean, truthfully, I got to do 15 hours of just radio a week. It's like, you know, yeah, it helps me a little bit. Can I be honest, though? Like, how much does a UFC Wichita help me get through a three-hour show? Not much. No. Not much. Every single day, three hours? Bro, I'm, I'm, pulling, I'm pulling all the strings from UFC 235. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm trying to get as much out of that <laughs> as possible. So, so yeah, it's a benefit, and it's a somewhat outdated argument now, but it definitely had relevancy for a while there. So, all right, next, please. Ryan, we'll go to you. Why aren't we watching? This is from Jed Mashu, by the way. I mean, you oh. want to talk about fiery takes? Oh my God. 
He is. We some fighter is going to find him so and uppercut him. So far outside the box, we can't even see the box anymore. Yeah, someone's gonna, some fighter is going to find him and uppercut him into living death. Uh, <laughs> why aren't we watching Robbie Lawler <laughs> fight Anderson Silva? I demand satisfaction. Do you like the idea of Mr. Bobby Knuckles? Oh, no, Bobby Knuckles is Whitaker. Mr. Uh, Lawler taking on Mr. Anderson. God, I love everything about that. I never even thought about that, but Robbie Lawler. What weight class? 185? Uh, yes, Robbie fought yes, a 185 yeah. in yes, strike. Yes, and Robbie's so a large weird. welterweight, as we know, and uh, that's perfect because that's what you do with old yeah. names. You make fun, creative fights with them. Uh, I always bring up the name, but what did Rich Franklin do the last five fights? He just fought in catch weights and moving up and down against other old names yeah. that can sell tickets, either in a co main on a pay per view or an in between one. UFC on ESPN, that is your main event. Are you kidding me? Yes. Jed, thank you. Thank you for feeling <laughs> what I'm feeling, all right? You know what I mean? I give a shout out to all my yeah. sisters who like w- weird carnival fights. BC cares if don't nobody else care, right? <laughs> I'll pass. I don't know. Doesn't. What? That yeah, doesn't move me. Doesn't really do anything wow. for me. Wow. All right. Well, are you about it? Also, uh, is it only because are you saying that because Robbie Lawler has um, relevance left in his division, or are you saying that because you just have no interest in seeing those two guys? I don't know. I don't have it. I haven't given it deep thought. It's just when I see it on paper, I don't. It, you guys ever seen Marie Kondo on Netflix? She's like this person. She's this Japanese lady. She blew up because her show went viral. She shows up to people's house and like declutters it and shows them how to live in a really healthy and organized way. And they, when they go through, like, well, we have too many plates or something, too many clothes, she'll make them put all the clothes together, and then she'll say, keep the ones that spark joy. Right? <laughs> like, you just, you know, you kind of see it, yeah. whatever it is, it sparks joy. Lawler versus Silva, to me, does not spark yeah. joy. You ever had a, a fried egg on top of a cheeseburger? Yes. That sparks joy. <laughs> That's what this fight is. Uh, not everybody's going to like it. It's going to get messy. The, the yolk's going to get all over the place. But that thing tastes like... Ew. I'm not even... I, again, I'm not saying it's... Bad? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it down. down. I feel like it's the same situation of, uh, not 100%, but close, of uh, Wonder Boy Thompson fighting Anthony Pettis. It's like, sure, is it a good fight? Like, would I would I see it? Yeah, but what what does it really do? I feel like Lawler, you know, still has a lot left in the tank. I feel like, dude, after watching what he did to to Askren, like, you know, that that was like a vintage former champions. But I think the fact that there's, you know, it's just we always have some kind of context with these two guys that it means something. Whatever they're doing means something. This would be the first time that they would basically be saying, like, we're not sure what this means. I think that that's where it loses some of its appeal. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're just strictly thinking of it from two guys who've had these legacies and uh, they still have more than an ounce of themselves to give, I, yeah. I feel like I'm that's... Not, I'm yeah. not saying it would suck. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm just kind of like, eh. I don't, I'm not moved by <laughs> But he's been... Sh- Jed, how... how like, if you're Jed, are you by definition toothless? You know what I mean? That's just that's a name you give to a like a really dumb person. Mm. Uh oh. No, I'm teasing. Wow. <laughs> I'm teasing. Wow. Uh, no, but I'm saying he he has been all over it on Twitter. He loves this idea. And again, I'm not saying it's wrong. That's not what I'm saying. I just I don't know. I was unmoved by the idea. As if the someone point. told you Anderson Silva has three fights left, you would want every single one of those three fights to be the Robbie Lawler, Nick Diaz, Conor McGregor type varieties rather than Derek Brunson and, 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 the and every right. other. Who's the guy that Silva yeah. just Jared fight? Kennedy. Jared, come on. Like, you really, that, what, is that, what does that fight do for you? See, here's the thing. See, I like, that, I like, fight see, I like Jared Kennedy, so I'm okay. Oh, so let's, see, let's put him against one of the greatest of all time? What does that accomplish? I'm, listen, you're, you're, asking me for my, no. you're asking me for my personal preference. My personal preference is I like Jared Kennedy. I'm not asking anyone to agree. Just tell you how I feel. Plus, I, I don't like the idea of pizza story. Silva yeah, fighting pizza story. Walter Waits. <laughs> If anything, I'd like to see him fight, wash. you know. There's no rules when you're... Wa- I think wash fights should be open weight. Just whatever. Hey, look, if they made it, cool, man. I'm not I'm not going to bitch about it at all. But if they, don't, you, if they don't, I'm not going to be like, oh, you know. To be honest, I can't think of a... I mean, there's no Anderson Silva fight at this point that I'm like, oh, I, I can't wait to see that. I f- almost feel like that with any Anderson Silva fight, what you're saying. I feel like I can't get above a certain... At this point of his career. I don't know. But... That's certainly one of them that would be high up there, like just yeah. something like that. Look, all I'm saying as is... As high as you can take that passion bar. All I'm saying is Jed has bad ideas. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you, I'm just wanted, you just I'm wanted just, to yeah, bat him I'm down I'm just totally teasing. I'm all just right. completely teasing. Or am I? Let's go to the next one. Uh, Chuck, what do you think about refs standing fighters up due to no action? So we got to this a little bit. Okay. I guess, uh, number one, the general feeling about what, what kind of involvement a referee should have. And then I guess two... Um, you know, the Usman Woodley situation, how do you feel about that? So what's what's your what's your worldview on that? You mean stand up or separate? Like are we talking about I think referee intervention is what they're talking about. Stand so, up stand ups is particular, but let's let's expand the question. Uh, 
there's a there's a feeling in the building when you're there, right? Like you're not listening to commentary. There's a feeling in the building that builds up. You hear people booing. It gets f- fairly uh, pressure filled from that from the standpoint of the referee. Now they're supposed to block that out and see what they're seeing. Yeah. But you understand that there is a very live, real pressure happening to a, 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 a the arbiter in that situation where they're saying like, "Hey, man, this fight sucks. This is stalling. Get, do something." It's I I feel like. It's so rare that I see something where it's truly stalled. That's the thing. Most guys in most positions, whether they're on top on the ground or they're in that uh, the 50-50 position on the fence, mm-hmm. and you're like, are they trying to improve? What what are we doing here? Are they trying to improve their situation? Is one guy trying to do something, the other guy's just holding on? You know, you want to know that it's definitively a stall, and that's where the gray area is. I sometimes have no. It's, I'd say that it's it's like that. It's more subjective. Like sometimes I see it and I'm like that needed to be separated because you, one guy who's ever dominating the action is is keeping it in a spot where there nothing can happen beyond mm-hmm. it's an impasse. Mm-hmm. Well, then you reset them. You get something going again. But in a situation like this last one, it was a little harder, obviously, because um, there were you know the, I think he landed uh, Usman landed something like 190. 141. Yeah, well, yeah. body shots alone. I know oh, yes, not all yes, of them. Mm-hmm. There's a, there is something about the intention. Yeah, some of, are like yes, you know, the intention like of what the what the intention behind those punches are. Right. Just look, trying to stay busy. You can understand how that is not really considered. Or the shoulder strikes. There was a lot of that. Yeah, type there, was, of thing. there was a ton of. So those I mean, th- those types of things. I mean, they don't really. But I felt like at times you would see him doing stuff. We're like, okay, no, he is doing it. You know. So it was that was a tough call for. Let him. me ask you this way for the rest of the panel and for you as well. But give me a yes or no so I can move it along. Okay. Yes or no, are you bothered in general by referee stand-ups or separations? No, I know that's a not in general. Okay, in general. How do you feel? No, it's it's not a gray area to me. I think when the offensive fighter stops being offensive, I think it's like in basketball. If someone's guarding you, you have five seconds to sort of pivot with the ball before the ref will call the whistle unless you have to pass it. I think that there's there should be, you know, a certain amount of time you can work in that guard, but then you got to get offensive. And if you're not being offensive, especially when you're being warned, what's the big deal? Correct answer. Yeah. What do you think, Danny? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm all for it. Um... You know, I think in, in many cases, especially if you're in a dominant position, like even if it's boring, you you know, you can't just take that away from somebody. But like, you know, in, in that, you know, Kamaru Usman versus Tyron Woodley situation where you're in the 50-50, I mean, sure, someone's in a somewhat dominant situation because, you know, one's against the cage, the other's not. But but it's not really like mount or, or side control or anything like that. So right. I, I was fine with that. The only thing that that kind of did bother me was the comment of, uh, you know, this is a fight because right. all of a sudden you're putting pressure on a fighter that could maybe go, okay, well, I, I got to do something. I might get to take a point away here or something. And then he goes out there and, and brawls and then maybe gets knocked out. Well, to, to Goddard's point, though, he did eight consecutive tweets to Luke in which he yeah, explained see that. that he apologized for that. He said, yeah. he, said he shouldn't have said it. So yeah. uh, Interesting. And okay. also, like, for example, response like, to, sorry, it was in response yeah. to Usman saying, why are you separate? Why are you yeah. standing right. us up? Yeah. Yeah, when I, they got, I think when, you should have just gotten separate and, and that's it because part of the strategy of Usman was, was tying him up, tiring him out, getting those punches in, you know, frustrating yeah. tyrants. So, uh, you know, once you put that comment out there, you know, that, that stays in the fighters, in the back of their minds. So, like, it could it could change the outcome yeah. or the fighter could be like, I it, I'm still keen to my, to my guns. Yeah, here, but uh, you don't know that. So I, I so do. This, so ahead, real quickly, ahead. this is what Mark Goddard. He wrote me many things, but one of the things uh, he writes is the following: My use of the words "quote uh, it's a fight" was not the correct wording to use at that point. It was the wrong yeah. choice. I should have used different wording. No question. I have nothing but respect for Kamaru and his entire performance. Lastly, my actions and words have been misconstrued, and for that, I can explain in full. Kamaru Usman fought an unbelievable fight, and if my words "it's a fight." caused him, uh, of all people, offense on the back of such an amazing performance, then I am truly sorry. My words at that time were wrong. First of all, I, I totally commend his yeah. humility, yes. but please continue. Um, yeah, but I just also want to say, because sometimes we, we go a little hard <coughs> on these guys, uh, MMA is better with, yeah. with Mark Goddard being a referee. thousand guy. percent. Yeah. And in, in most cases these days, I feel like the referees are so much more advanced than they used to be. Yes. We, there was, maybe you will remember this, UFC 84, I think it was. There was somebody, and I think it might have been uh, Clemente, had he was had his arm, somebody was in a dominant position and had a guy with his arm pinned behind his back. And this went on, and the, and the referee came in after about a minute while the guy has his arm pinned behind his back on the ground uh, in, a, in a dominant position and stands them up. And I was thinking about that, I was yeah, like, that's insane. There was almost no outcry about that at the time. Yeah. I remember the fighter himself, I believe it was Clemente, was talking about it. No love. After, yeah. yeah. He was like the talking ori- about the it The original afterward. no love. He was like, he was talking about it after like, dude, he had his arm <laughs> like, yeah. trapped under his like, yeah. that's how yeah. can you be in a more violent Nobody talked about yeah. it. And you realize that we come how far we've come that 
now we dissect, at least we're looking at dominant, people know what a dominant position is for the most part. I, I think I'll just quickly add, since we have so many more to get to here, but I, 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 uh, I went back and I've been watching this fight so many, so many times. Again, the it's a fight thing, Goddard has apologized, and when yeah. he said it, I was like, I don't, I, I don't, I just, that's just not great. But remember, this guy is, these guys are fighting in real time, and he's refing in real time. We give commentary in real time. How many times have you gone back and seen an opinion you said about a year ago, and yeah. you're like, "Yeah, no, that didn't pan out well." Yeah, I mean, last week's show. I yeah, said last week's show. Yeah. I mean, you're saying hooray. We, you know, we fired and rehired you. No, I'm teasing. But the point being is this: it's hard to do things in real time with precision and accuracy. It's just really yes. difficult. Can we just give the MVP award real quick? We mentioned Usman to uh, Woodley's mom. Have you seen that video? Hold that on. Let me let me finish the point. All let me right. finish the point before you just have your tangen <laughs> tangential ideas. My view is that we are operating, and again, I have to convince people, and I, this is one I'm a little bit less, uh, like with PEDs, I'm like, it's so obviously true that the way we're doing it is bad. But this one, I'm really to have a debate about it because I'm not sure I know all the exact right answers. Um, I think the way that we approach refereeing is antiquated. And there are a lot of people out there who express antiquated ideas because they really believe them. But when you say things like, you know, I think Joe Rogan said you should earn all stand-ups. I think this is an antiquated way of thinking. This is like saying in basketball, you should not have a shot clock. Like the shot clock is in every way better for basketball. It forces action. It forces better team play. It forces passing. It forces shooting. It forces a game where you can get 100 or more points with, uh, uh, scoring on a side. If you don't have a shot clock or three seconds in the paint or whatever, you have a much less interesting game. The idea is not that referees should be arbiters of entertainment, but they should be arbiters of action. Mm -hmm. And we know that because one, BJJ has a stalling problem, and two, so does wrestling, except we empower wrestling referees. I, I say it all the time, if you watch wrestling, Danny, you wrestled, yeah. you know this, True or false, referees at amateur wrestling are on their yeah, whistle. Yeah. They'll call constantly. you for stalling, yeah. You can't even take a step yeah. backwards without them going the sport, nuts. The sport would die if it was all about neutralization. It's, it's, you know what I mean? If so, you're, like, the idea is a neutralized guy just holding yeah, there. So this be... idea, like I've seen it. You get lesser <laughs> UFC fighters and they'll try and like dive in and they'll hit the hips along the fence. And the guy defending it, he can defend it enough to not get yeah. taken down. And the other guy can defend it enough where it looks like he's doing something. They will stall each other. Yeah. They will stall each other forever. Kamara Usman and Tyron Woodley, here is why I believe Mark Goddard should be exonerated. I went back and I timed everything. I looked at what he did. Here's the only situations where he separated them along the fence is when they had 50-50. Each guy had an underhook. Each guy had an overhook. And over two minutes would pass, and no one even tried to pummel in. Yeah. Guys, if you're spending two minutes along the fence and no one's looking for inside control, there's no takedown here. With your hips all the way back, there's no takedown here. The first step is getting hip to hip and then getting inside control or changing levels. They didn't change levels. They didn't go for inside control. They didn't go hip to hip, nothing. Mark Goddard if, was absolutely justified in separating them. The only one that was weird was the stand-up because he was right to do it, but right as he was doing it, Kamar Usman almost yeah. had a gift wrap. That's that way he was like, what? Like he's, he's like, <laughs> but here's the thing about Kamaru. He doesn't pass guard. Yeah. It's not a feature of his game. And you can hear after 30 seconds, a minute, a minute 30, you got to move. You got to progress. I absolutely defend Mark Goddard on his calls, just not the thing about it's a fight because, hey, you're fighting Tyron Woodley. Oh, by the way, that's hard to do. Yeah. Okay. Well said. Next one. What is your favorite place you visited as a tourist or a place you'd love to go one day? Boys. Hmm. Mm. Wichita. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, man. No, I'd rather die. <laughs> I would legitimately I rather die. Probably, for me, that I went to Big Sur, California. I've been up yes. there a few times, but I, cool. every time I, oh, it's it's amazing. Yeah. It's like going to, I don't know, heaven or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've long dreamed of uh, the national parks on the West Coast and plan to to get those off of my bucket list, yeah, but I will yeah, say a few sure. years ago I did a week long with the family camping trip in Acadia National Park on the shores of Maine, Ooh. and I had no idea that on this east coast, which I thought I dominated, look, I've been all through the mountains in Vermont and New Hampshire, they're incredible. I had no idea beauty existed in New England on the east coast like that till I actually started. I've heard Maine is low-key awesome. Yeah. Well, you mm -hmm. have mountains and ocean together mm -hmm. in, uh, at a certain height, which you don't have anywhere else on the eastern seaboard, so it's-, it's Yeah, it's it's the rest incredible. is all just beach, right? Yeah. What about you? Um, last year I took a trip to, I, I was in Spain and I went to Barcelona and that was pretty sick. I totally lived there. I, I loved it. It's an amazing yeah. city. Um, and then a place that I'd like to go, I always like to go to Thailand. Um, mm. and just, you know, 
roam around and check it out. It, yeah. looks, it looks nice. Um, I've been lucky to travel a lot. My dad was in the Foreign Service, so I've been to a lot of places. Uh, swam in the Dead Sea. That was that was nice. a bucket list moment. That was cool. Uh, I've seen the pyramids. Um, you know, I've, I was born in India. Been to Japan. Uh, uh, I, you know, I've been, I've been to a lot of places. Colombia was an interesting adventure, and obviously remains one for me. Um, but the number one place I've been to, man, it just really. Ch I mean, I I can't say anything bad about it. Was Madrid, Madrid, Spain for me. Yeah. Is just an, is a magical place, man. It is um, the people are, in, are well, they're they're shitty, but sorry, they're <laughs> bad. But um, the uh, food is incredible, and the sites are incredible, and the culture is incredible. And Spain's my favorite place outside of the United States, so I would go Madrid, Spain for yeah. and, Bar and Barcelona too. Like they're they're. Football. I haven't been to Madrid. You never been to Madrid? No, I it's totally not. different. Yeah, it's like old world Europe. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, Barcelona's pretty old as well. Um, I know, but, but the, the Spaniards hate on Madrid because you go there. I remember we, we went to the remember the uh, train station in Madrid that was bombed. I I went there. Obviously not during the bombing. And I asked the lady buying the ticket. I was like, "You, you live in Madrid, right?" She's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Which place do you like more, Madrid or Barcelona?" She goes, "Barcelona." I was like, "What?" <laughs> Barcelona is sick. It's, it is cool. It's pretty nice. I like it. uh, when's UFC Barcelona? Huh? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, UFC yeah. Barcelona. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You ever been to Bettendorf? No, I have. No, beautiful. There's yeah. eagles right there on the river. Yeah, I'll yeah. pass. I'll All pass. right, it is cold. There, Bring like, a Amer jacket. America is huge. <laughs> Yo, there's pockets of humanity, bro. There's like a lot. There's like 50, there's like, there's 50 states. Yeah, I don't need to see all 50. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> uh, all right, next. Okay, table. For Tyron to get another title shot, should he root for a Colby win and an Askren Lawler rematch? Is that his best chance? So what is Tyron's best path back to the title? Dean Thomas That's speaking to Brett Okamoto this week, being like, uh... Yeah, He's, he might have a hard road back after all those hard feelings in the promotion. So, what okay, do you guys so think? That's probably a pretty good yeah. scenario for him, honestly. And you know, I asked Askren last week before before the fights, what happens if you win and Woodley loses? And he said he would give him first right of refusal. He'd basically check his motivations yeah. and how he might be able to get back before he would start lobbying for himself. So, if that's if that's the case, um, you, we know that he wants to he wants to challenge Till or uh, Mas Vidal. So if that's the case, wherever it's going to happen, his best bet is for Colby Covington to go in there and beat Usman, and then because they have the beef already with the lottery so, ticket. So I feel like that's his best bet right there. I would I would say I don't think Askren's too much of a of a player in this one because Askren, as you said, he said he doesn't want you know he he'd have to, he, he would have to get Tyrone's blessing. Um, he wins one more and he becomes. But I think if Colby <laughs> wins, dude, that you 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 know that fight yeah. build up yeah. a, a nice fight there. Also, don't forget about 185. Tyron Woodley true. has mentioned that's 185. True. What Ooh, if Kelvin Gastelum wins the interim belt? That's a good point. Yeah. You know, good. beats Robert Whitaker. You know, the, all of a sudden, I believe Tyron has a win over uh, Gastelum. He right? does. It's yeah. Good decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He can just go back up there, beat somebody, well, and then probably get a I don't see stuff. them rewarding him. He, they don't. He, the UFC hasn't. Seem to go yeah. out of their way to, to help Woodley out. Not not a company guy in their eyes, but uh, would he be small for eighty five? You know, he's a big dude, he's a big man. Dude, yeah. He's a big dude. Like he has I mean, to do Gasolum road work to get down. I mean, is considered a small guy for one eighty five. Look at what he's done. Yeah, exactly. Do you real quick? Robert Whitaker was a welterweight. I had fears coming in that Usman Good was point. maybe too much of a front runner because we'd never see him have to rally back, and we still haven't learned that because he absolutely dominated Woodley. I never thought about it. Was Woodley a little bit of a front runner where we had never seen him have no, to have No, I don't think he's a front. C? No, no. I see, mean, the, the Thompson first fight went, was a little flip flop. So. Front runner to me is somebody who quits when they don't necessarily have to or when things get hard. I don't, that's not Tyrone. See, I, I don't, uh, the quitting angle I'm not throwing in. I'm just saying, look, in, in, let's say in basketball, a front mean, runner can, is somebody who, if they have the lead, they can always protect the it and put you away, but can they, they rally? Crumble, yeah. Can they rally back? I just think um, people are like, oh, Tyron looked flat, and he did look flat, but I think he looked flat because. Tyron has, people are like, oh, he's got a bad gas tank. I don't think that's true, but I don't think he has a super great one, and I think he knows he doesn't have a super great one, so yeah. he wants to manage his resources, and when he manages it, it's like if you're fighting Kamar Usman, you want to save that for the real threat, which is the takedown, so he kind of just got stuck in these positions where he, you know, he wanted to do more, and he probably could have done more, but I don't think he wanted to spend enough energy where something would be a problem later, so front runner, no. Um, but against Darren Till, I think he knew he had Till's number. I think he knew that, and so he fought in a way that was commensurate with the threat, you know. And uh, obviously, he was right. Was it the third or fourth round when they broke out for just a minute in a gunfight? Like 
I think it was fourth. fourth. It was the fourth, fourth round. round. So that fourth, was yeah. so that was after another Goddard stand up. Yeah, uh, yeah. He separated them and then they started. Because I remember, yeah. I just remember one of those punches of his just went zoomed right by. Like it was so close. I was like, yeah. damn, that would have well, changed the whole complexion. You could tell he'd wait in all fight for that moment and yeah. probably conserving whatever energy he had. But you got to credit Usman for taking every yeah. drop out of that gas tank. Yeah, and True. Usman's amazing in that way. So. Yeah. Um, I think Usman, just think about this, like who's a bad matchup for Usman? And I don't know that there is one. Maybe Askren is, we'll see. Um, but somebody who's a good striker who can force a takedown and then has excellent submissions, because you saw RDA nearly get a Kimura. It was only by the grace of yeah. God that um, that that uh, Kimura got out of it. I wonder if that might be an interesting matchup yeah. for him. So we'll see. We'll see but Askren versus Usman, I, I think. I think somebody that can keep up his space, and yeah. Askren can wrestle for days. He so. can wrestle for days, yeah. exactly. That's going to be, he's a fun addition, man. Yeah. He's a fun addition. All right, next. Uh, table, we always say MMA is better than boxing when it comes to mental health or brain damage, but is that really true? Nobody in MMA has aged much compared to boxing, so we don't really know, but you've got Hunt, Chuck, Vandalay. He's got a uh, micro, but I think he means Mirko. <laughs> or I can't read it. No, he's got Mirko, but, but with, with okay. a C. Yeah. yeah, GSP, Coleman, and Hughes have recently shown some yeah. symptoms. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like probably that MMA is less damaging to brain health, given that you have a wider yeah. target area, so it's yeah. not as centrally focused. But I think we've got some, oh, yeah. I think there's a storm on the horizon. Well, it's a tough comparison, because you're comparing softer punches with bigger gloves to absolutely violent strikes that knock you out with knees and, and kicks and four ounce That's gloves. True. So it's, what, what would you rather have? But it's less volume of head impact, right. I That's think, true. over time. It's less volume. But MMA is also known for having sparring wars. Absolutely. And, and so, I mean, that's... But less so these days. And, you know, wrestling, you can get your head hurt. Obviously, you can get you can get concussions in BJJ, but obviously it's a lot less. Yeah. Well, why do we worry so much about BJ Penn? You don't want to see him take any more damage. I mean, that's the bottom line. We've seen him take as many beatings as you ever want to. Um, Chuck Liddell was the same thing. We saw him walk away, and there was obvious speech component there where you're like, you start to be concerned. I mean, the bottom line is a lot of these guys, um, you know, I don't know, like Matt Hughes, I didn't really hear too much from uh, during his retirement and stuff, but Mark Hunt had a whole piece in the thing about his brain, you know, like where he wrote a, a Players' Tribune thing. I feel like you're right when you say that another 10, 15, 20 years, that will, it'll be it'll seem pretty equal to be honest. I think it'll be, they'll seem equally dangerous. Or you know, hard to tell the difference. Yeah, right? hard to. Yep, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. So I, we'll see that Cleveland Clinic brain study as it's ongoing. At least say it's going to be something to follow true. right there. Uh, okay, I think we have one more. Let's do it. One more. If you had to pick an alcoholic beverage or cocktail to best describe your personality, which would you choose? So you can have any kind of alcoholic beverage or a cocktail. So it can be a beer, it can be a glass of wine, it can be something else. Of course, I picked this question. <laughs> what do you think? Danny, which one are you? He's a Harvey Wallbanger. Um, <laughs> I'll go with Aguardiente. Ugh. Because I'm lit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, fair enough, fair play. What about you there? Azima. No. <laughs> Just Azima with that a Jolly Ranch. That's actually not that bad. Azima with a Jolly Ranch. Prime, like 94 Zima, not, not any kind yeah, of. Yeah, of course, the only the best now. stuff. Yeah. Chuck, what do you think? Probably a pink lady. No, I'm just kidding. I would I'd probably go with like a whiskey drink. Maybe just straight up, just a glass of Proper whiskey. 12? <laughs> Proper 12, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty I mean, my, basic. I'm, 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 like my, my drinking mascot is a uh, double gym and diet, uh, or double gym and Coke Zero. But I, don't, I mean, I don't know how, is that representative? I don't know. Um, no sex on the beach. Bloody Mary. No, bloody, are you a Bloody Mary guy? Hell no. I think they're gross. They were drinking one of those Clamata Bud Light. Yeah, tomato. Exactly. that's the worst creation. <laughs> people ever. are like, I want to go drink tomatoes funny, though, on a Sunday. Are oh, you but hot? it's funny though that There's people who love, too. I know they love, Dude, they love that. That's stuff. like a yeah. ritual to go have a Bloody Mary. God no, Lord. I don't think so. I, I no, I would just say, um, uh, what would I say? What would I say? Um, What's good to drink with when you're listening to abortion metal? <laughs> First of all, it's death metal, <laughs> number one. Oh, well, but you like that band cry, Crying Children or something awful. Yeah. No. Uh, um, God, you know, I don't know. I guess I'd go with a whiskey drink, too, but I just feel like that's so typical white guy, yeah. you know? Um, you know what? I'll just go with... Uh, I'll go with a, um, a Boulevardier. There you go. Yeah. I almost said that. Yeah, a little bitters in yeah. it. That's what I like. That's what I like. I, I, like, like, a, I like a well-balanced, a little bit of bitterness yeah. in it. You I know what I'm you. saying? All right. I think we're done. Um, enjoy UFC Wichita this weekend. If you're watching the video, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. 
And uh, yeah, we're back on Monday, and we're going to have coverage of UFC Wichita. We'll look ahead to the UFC London card and a whole lot more. So appreciate you guys tuning in. For Chuck, for Brian, for Danny, I'm Luke. Hands up, chin down, let them fly. This is the MMA Beat.